Hi, I'm Brandon Grizzly. I'm a high school math teacher. We're going to find the distance between two points, or another way to say that is the length of the line segment with these two endpoints. So here we're going to use A21 and B7-3. So on our grid here, I'm going to plot those two points. Let's do that in red. So two along the x-axis and one vertically. So that's the point A. I'll just label it here, 2, 1, point A. And then let's also plot point B, which is 7, negative 3, across here to 7, and then down to negative 3. That's the point B, 7, negative 3. Okay, let's connect these into a line segment, and we're going to find the length of that segment, if I can get this ruler. Okay, so there's the segment, which is a part of a line. Lines continue infinitely in both directions. So how are we going to find this? Well, we're going to think back to uh, a little bit of math that we learned many years ago, uh, the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem worked like this. If you had a triangle like this, and you knew the lengths of the two short sides, you could use it to find the length of the long side. And so often we would label it like this. This is side C, and we know the lengths of sides A and B. And so we end up with a formula something like this. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So if we needed to find the length of this side, we could use the other two sides to make a calculation to find that. Uh, and then we would take the square root after we found the sort of this value. We would take the square root to find the value of C. Well, we're going to simplify that expression here. We're going to take the square root of both sides. And this will give us, over on this side, this will give us the value of c, because c can't be a negative number. We're allowed to do this. Squaring c and then taking the square root of it is the same as leaving it alone. And so we end up with this expression. And maybe you've seen that one before, too. Um, so this is a general expression. If I know the lengths of two sides of a triangle, I can find the length of the hypotenuse by using an, a, a formula like this one. Now over here, I have a side, but I don't have the two short sides. Well, I kind of do, actually. So let me just draw these in here. I'll just freehand them in. This side here goes down to that spot, and this side here goes over there. And that is a right angle. And so I do know the length of this side. This side is of length 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And this one is of length 3, 1, two, or sorry, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so this, is, this side is length 4, and this side is length 5. Now, other than counting this, I could also take the difference between the x values. Here I have the x value 7, and backing up this way I have the x value 2. All of the values here have an x value 2. So that is a distance of 7 minus 2, which is 5. And vertically I've got 1 minus negative 3. 1 minus negative 3, which is going to be 4. That's that difference, and so that's that distance. Vertical distances, you can just subtract the x's or the y's. And so now I do know those two side lengths, and I can fill them in into this, uh, into this equation. So the length of side AB, and I'll write it like this, the length of AB is equal to the square root of 4 squared plus 5 squared, which is the square root of... 16 plus 25, that is the square root of 41, uh, which is not a super nice number. Let me grab a calculator here. Uh, 40, oh sorry, this one is, I gotta hit the square root first, and then 41 equals about 6.4. So I'll put the about dot there to say that this is approximately equal to 6.4. All right, so now here I have already calculated my 4 and my 5, but we can generalize this just a little bit more and say that for any segment, the length of a segment AB, which has, uh, we're going to, I'll fill in the values here in a second, is going to be equal to the difference in the x values squared plus the difference in the y values squared. And so this is when a is equal to uh, x1, y1, and b is equal to x2, y2, if I were to generalize it like that. You can just sort of fill in your x-coordinates here and subtract them, fill in your y-coordinates here and subtract them, 
square each of them, and then take the square root. Now you might be a little worried, like which one goes first? What if, what if I use A first or B first or what if I get these mixed up? It's actually totally okay because if you were to subtract, like uh, uh, let's say you took 3 minus 7, and you got a negative 4 answer here. Well, when you square it, you'd square that negative number. Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. You'll always get a positive result when you square this. This will always be positive, and this will always be positive. So you always have a positive plus a positive, and everything is going to be fine, even if you switch the order of the x's or the y's around, or if, you know, depending on the, the values that you have, you might have lots of negative numbers in here. So, Take the difference in the x's, the difference in the y's, square each of those, add them up, and take the square root, and that'll give you the length of the side, uh, or the, the length of a line segment. And always think about it in the triangle, and uh, you'll remember Pythagoras' theorem. Thanks.